All right, welcome back. So today um, was going to be a video about my V2 infraction. Just getting ready to, I'm uh, charging up some batteries, getting ready to uh, go outside and rip it a little bit. Want to do a little bit of drifting with it. I got the twin motor felony sitting on the bench. And so I wiped it all down and I have game changer fans on this. So I went ahead and cracked the lid. So I was gonna get everything secure. I do have a light kit on this as well. So I was gonna tape up the light kit, um, find out if I need a 3S or 4S battery for the fan. Um, I do have another game changer fan on the other side, which is also 3S. So I was gonna charge up some small mini packs to throw in here so that I don't have to run them off the main batteries because I want to get a little bit more runtime out of it. And then of course get some of the rubber from the last time I ripped it out of it. And when I cracked the lid, um, I saw this. These batteries were unplugged. They weren't plugged in. Um, but they were sitting in the RC. So this caught me way off guard. Um, like way off guard. Um, I know the last time I had this out, I ripped it until the batteries were dead, unplugged it, cut the video, that kind of stuff. And, um, I put up the RC. Um, I never pulled the batteries as you see. Um, but I was shocked to see them puff like this. I didn't put them into star storage mode. I know they were at 3.5 a cell um, because they ran to lipo cutoff. So it got me thinking, well, did I run it? Or did after that rip, I went ahead and charged up batteries and go to do a video and did I forget to run the RC? Did I forget something about it? So I went to check them. It doesn't give me much information. But I want to talk LiPo safety because now it's got me in a spot that I've had batteries puffed before but not to the point of explosion like this. And I've been doing RC a long time because I cycle my batteries so much, um, I rarely <clears throat> run across a battery that's, you know, got a charge to it and uh, is about to blow up. See, this thing is literally, I'm not getting anything off this. I have to find my cheap cell checker. I think this starts here. Because I'm literally not getting anything off of these. So I don't know if they're totally dead or what's going on with them, but they're under a lot of pressure. So no power to that thing. And no power to that one. Yeah, there's literally no voltage in these batteries at all. That's why the cell checker won't, uh, won't display anything. So what do you do? I mean, there's no voltage in it. So do I smash it with a hammer? I don't, to release the gas? Is it going to catch fire? I mean, there's no charge to it. I know... 
in talking to Max Amps, uh, because that's the only other battery I had short out of cell on a crash. It literally, I went to charge it, and it said I had a dead cell. So I contacted Max Amps. I sent them a video of it, and they basically... What they told me to do was I discharged the battery, um, got it to a safe point, and cut the connectors down at the base so it cannot be reused or repaired. Right? And then I always cut off the balance leads because I save them to repair other bad balance leads that get damaged in RC cars. And that's the way I destroy a battery. And then they say, toss it into a trash can. But I just don't feel safe doing that. I never have. Um, owning an auto repair store, we, we recycle batteries. See, and that one, that one sparked. There was a spark in between there. It wasn't much, but it was a spark. So it's probably down at 8 volts or something. So, and then I hear some guys say, yeah, you throw it in a bucket of salt water. And that'll destroy the battery. So is that what we do? So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to see... How am I going to safely destroy these things? But the first thing you should do whenever you see something like this is get it out of your house. So the first thing I'm going to do is get this thing out of my house. Be right back. So the first thing I do, here's my garage. I don't want it anywhere on the property of my house. So basically in front of my garage... I go ahead and store the packs because right here, there's nothing for it to catch on fire. So we're gonna leave the packs there and I'm gonna decide on what I'm gonna do with those battery packs. We'll be right back. All right, so we're back again. So here, I've basically taken an old pot that I have one that I don't use um, don't make my spaghetti in it no more I actually have new non-stick pans but I've mixed up water and salt um, basically I took a salt shaker size container and dumped it in there the more salt the better um, and what this is gonna do is this is gonna conduct electricity between the terminals and it's gonna create a short and it's gonna slowly bring out the charge. Mine are not charged, they're below eight volts. So they're not turning on fans. They're not at any kind of dangerous voltage at this point. They've already puffed and that's because they were in storage mode or storage charge, meaning I was below 3.5 per cell after my run when this thing um, when the batteries decided to go bad. So, what I'm going to do now, and you guys should all have, if you're using RC, um, you guys should all have a fire extinguisher that gets rid of, that puts out electrical fires. So, right there electrical fire I should all carry this when I go speed running when I'm out bashing I always have one of these in my vehicle just in case and at home same thing I carry the same one I bought this one about six months ago I replace it yearly um, so it's just a good investment especially if you're gonna be messing with lipo batteries so we're just gonna drop these things in here and we're gonna let them sit for about an hour. Yeah, and by the way, I ended up sticking them 
I emptied out the rest of my batteries and I ended up sticking the batteries in here just because even setting it outside my garage, you know, if somebody were to walk by and the thing caught on fire, you know, it could scare somebody. Or if somebody decided to pick it up um, and it blow up at that time, I just wouldn't feel comfortable. So I grabbed my ammo box that I clearly vented and I pulled the rubber seal out um, so that it doesn't get a tight seal and it could vent. So, definitely want it vented. So, we're going to let those things sit. You can see right there, you can see that it's discharging right in there. I'm going to bring you guys in closer. You'll see how it, you'll see it working. You can see the little bubbles coming off the balance lead and you can see it coming off the negative side. The positive side's got a bubble on it, but the negative side right now, when it's doing that, it's basically uh, conducting electricity and it's draining any little voltage out of that battery. Now, the one that's puffed, as you see, little bubbles are coming out of it. They're coming out of the ground side. This basically has no more charge left in it. Um, so you don't see the little bubbles coming out. So there's not much, there's not a steady stream of voltage coming out of that one, out of any of the terminals. So I know the battery that's really puffed isn't, uh, doesn't really have much in it. It's got a little bit because those bubbles are the salt pulling out the charge. Now this one on the other hand, this one has got some charge in it because that's a clear sign that it's sucking out voltage. So just a little tip, hopefully the camera's picking that up. Hopefully I can zoom in on that. And we're gonna let this sit till I see no more bubbles coming out of that one or that one. It's funny, the stream of bubble, it's like one bubble, not that one, the one coming out of the ground connector, that one, could be just air in the case um, or it could be the cell that short it is discharging the nice thing about doing it this way is some people say connect to the battery terminals and you can discharge that way but if you have a cell a battery that was fully charged and it desoldered itself inside there you would basically only suck the voltage out of the two cells that are still connected to that and the single cell that's about to blow up is still fully charged because it's shorted it desoldered itself so the jumper wires are no no longer there that's why this is a good clean safe method um, or you can do like some people do and pound a hammer through it and see the smoke in the fire um, but i don't recommend that way for one, the gases coming out of it could affect people that are around you. I'm in a housing complex and people have their windows open and it's not worth admitting the hazardous material out of these batteries um, and smoking my neighbors out. So this is a good clean way to destroy a battery. So we'll be back in an hour. Matter of fact, we're gonna go finish up on the Infraction V2. I'm still charging batteries. We're going to get out and rip that thing today. All right, back inside, going over the V2. I'm still going to rip this thing today. Um, it's funny, I've been looking for my adapters for a while, and they're in this car. But I wanted to talk about why I save these battery ends. Um, because of situations like this. This is a battery that's still good, but it had suffered some damage to this connector. Now this connector hit the pinion gear because it was dangling loose and then went outside the body and was dragging on the floor on a speed run and this is what happened to it. So I did peel it back and check to make sure that the cells, the wires were still attached 
and they are so I need to desolder well I need to cut and repair this connector now this is a 4s and these are 3s so I can't use these so and you can buy what they sell jumper leads I normally buy um, the um, balance port extenders and you can cut one side off and repair it that way but I just wait until I have a set of batteries that are gonna go bad and it's gonna happen when you have over 100 RC's like I do and over 50 batteries um, you're gonna have batteries go bad and the batteries that I just pulled out of this the last time I seen batteries puff like that I want to say it was 15 years ago when all I owned was Traxxas batteries. Um, I bought Traxxas RCs and I bought the recommended Traxxas batteries. And I want to say within six months in my garage, every one of those Traxxas batteries puffed. And that was about 15 years ago. So normally I plug them in to charge them and my battery charger tells me, hey, there's a cell problem. It won't charge it because I always balance charge and then from there I throw a battery checker on it and I check the cell if you got a all your cells are up above you know four four volts and you have one cell that's like three five that one cell is definitely shorted so don't charge the battery at that point properly dispose of the battery and what I mean properly discharge it and there's Two ways of getting rid of a battery a recycling center um, I've called all of my vendors for um, automotive batteries um, and they don't take these lipos now for me through my shop they take them out as a courtesy and they say they properly dispose of them I don't know what they're doing with them I honestly have a feeling they're just throwing them in the trash the other place I used to drop them after they were fully discharged is Best Buy. Used to have a cell phone and Office Depot. Both of them used to have a bin when you walked in that said uh, cell phone recycling center. And that's because of the LiPo batteries that are in them. So you could drop your LiPo batteries in there and they would properly dispose of those batteries. Um, I don't feel it's a good place to drop a battery um, in Office Depot or Best Buy um, at those cell phone recycling centers. They're basically an open trash can like a bomb. If somebody hasn't properly discharged the battery, that could create a huge issue with one of these being shorted in a pile of cell phones. So the next one is the materials made to make a LiPo battery they're not really, there's not much mercury in them to recycle. And that's why they say, just cut off your balance leads and throw them in the trash. That's what my hobby store told me to do. I was shocked that out of the nine hobby stores in my area, every one of them that I brought a LiPo battery to and said, can you properly recycle this battery? They said, we don't do that. They sell them but they don't recycle them which is you know mind blowing to me because the EPA should they should have an EPA number because they're selling batteries and it's a you know <laughs> recyclable product but apparently they don't need an EPA license to sell R RC lipo batteries so at that point all you can do, cut off the terminals, toss it in the trash, but make sure that it's discharged 100%. And if you're unsure, after you throw it in the bath of, uh, of uh, salt water and you don't see any more bubbles, go ahead and drive a stake through it. It shouldn't do anything because there's no voltage in it. It shouldn't smoke. It shouldn't do anything. So there we go, guys. I'm going to go ahead and get this thing... Uh, all set up so that we can go out and rip it. We'll see you guys in a few.
that was weird. Trying to call the local fire department. Um, yes, um, I had a question. I was wondering if there's something you can help me out with. Me, me and my kids play with uh, radio control RC cars, uh -huh. um, which you can purchase LiPo batteries for. Um, and I just recently had two of them go bad um, to where they're puffed and look like they're about to explode. So I Googled how to you know, get rid of a LiPo battery, and it's very vague on what I'm supposed to do with this thing. Um, because... I know, like, I don't... I know we don't take them. Yes. And I know most communities have collection centers for batteries, but you probably don't want to take it to, uh, you know, a uh, um, just a regular battery collection place, you know, whereas you've got one bleeding. Um, That's correct. And, you know, and, and, and the thing... Let me tell you what I found uh, putting it on YouTube on how to discharge it properly and dispose of it what what a few ways is one one video said put a nail in the center of it and hit it and then it creates a smoke and a fire and wait for it to short out and then it's totally discharged which i find kind of dangerous and toxic um yeah, the other the other yeah. one was a bucket of water with a ton of salt in it to drop them into that and they'll slowly discharge so that's what I have sitting in front of my house now is a bucket of water with a bunch of salt in it. Um, and it looks like it's, you know, slowly bubbling from the terminals. So I'm assuming it's taking the charge out of it. Well, what it's probably doing, yeah, it's like <clears throat> it's facilitating, you know, the, the, uh, the salt in the water makes, because uh, pure water isn't conductive at all, but salt water, you know, water with any impurities as it is, and you put salt water in it, it's creating basically... It's creating a conductive path that's allowing that battery just to kind of feed and feed and feed and feed and feed and burn itself out, I think, is probably, and the water's keeping it from over. Yes, so that, that seemed like a safe alternative for me. Yeah. So I have my fireproof box next to it and a fire extinguisher. Um, but So I figured I was going to do that, and then they say just after that's done to throw it in the trash. And I'm like, well, that doesn't I seem right. probably not do that, just but, um, you know, I guess what they're thinking is once you do that, you've gotten rid of all of the, the potential. But I don't, I would think, I know my community where I live, they have a uh, household hazardous waste to pick up, like every, like every weekend or something that you can go to the city yard. Did you Google that for Santa Clarita household hazardous waste? I didn't, and I am out here in Santa Clarita because I did try Best Buy for the cell phone drop-off. I did yeah. try battery dispensaries for car batteries, and they wouldn't take it. I also yeah, I tried the hobby shops. Because usually... They have, I know Thousand Oaks where I live, they sponsor it. You may go online, make an appointment, you can bring old paint, old pesticides, basically anything like you're cleaning out your garage, you find stuff that just seems like it's hazardous, you yep. can bring it to household hazardous waste. Okay, so I'm going to Google that, and that sounds like a great way to get rid of it. All right, thanks. I appreciate your help. Take care, buddy. Thank you. Bye. So there you go, guys. Household hazardous waste. Most areas have a local drop-off you can schedule once a week. That sounds like the best route to go. So I'm going to gather up all the old batteries, and if I have paint or anything, I'm going to Google that. I'm going to drop my batteries off there because I think I have four or five now um, that it's time to get rid of. I don't want them in my house anymore. So fire department, if you have any questions about anything that conducts fire, um, contact your local police department, fire department, non-emergency line, and ask the information. It's better to ask than it is to create a, a situation later on. Um, especially a bad situation where we're throwing these things away and we find out later that, hey, it is hazardous to the environment, hazardous causing fires. It's something that I don't want to do, especially in California where we suffer from fires anyway. So household hazardous waste in your area. Google it. Contact them. Schedule an appointment. 
Thanks for watching this episode of Earl Doesn't Blow Up His Infraction. We all make mistakes. You should never store your batteries in your RCs. I am guilty of it. I think all of us are guilty of it. Um, when I get back from bashing, me and the kids, we normally leave them on the ground. First thing I ask the kids to do is pop the lids, pull the batteries. But sometimes you get something overlooked and it could be a bad situation. So luckily, I'm constantly, daily going through my RCs. So I caught this one puffed and uh, thank God it didn't blow. Um, but there we go, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. We will see you guys on my next video. Thanks for watching.